Hi everyone, we're here at Pontiac Lake Bark Park and to, we're continuing today with our presentations on different breeds of dogs. And I've got some really interesting ones for you today. And we're going to start with the two that are beside me. On my right we have Debbie Myers and her dog Isaac. And on my left we have Deanna Elko and her dog Banner, right? What we want to do, as we always do, is we want to tell you about these breeds because these are definitely large or giant breeds. Yeah. And we're going to have a little bit of trouble. How, let's start from the beginning. How old is Isaac? Isaac is six. Isaac is six and Banner is? Eight months. Eight months. So you can just see the difference. We've done that before. I, I think you might remember whenever we did a Collie and a Sheltie and we no. did other combinations six. of the larger and smaller six. breeds. So we're going to start and um, we'll start with Debbie. And Debbie, tell us something about, just tell them in general just about Isaac. Then we'll talk about the breed and all that. Okay, well Isaac is, um, a six-year-old Newfoundland, he has his championship, so his, his full name is Champion Baron Mines Master and Commander. I would say that again. I, I uh, say isn't that, that lofty? Yes, uh, <laughs> that's impressive, but I want to hear what you're talking uh, I had just seen the Russell Crowe movie, so that's uh, what, yeah. Okay. Um, it's Champion Baron Mines Master and Commander. And, uh, you know, I wanted a, a really good solid name because he's going to be a good solid dog. Um, he has a lot of, of titles. He has um, uh, a companion dog, AKC obedience title. He has uh, a rally, AKC uh, rally title. He has three trip titles. He has um, a wa two water titles from the Newfoundland Club of America. He has a drafting title from the Newfoundland Club of America. And drafting is um, pulling a cart. And with the Newfoundlands, uh, they have a course and it's done off leash. With other breeds like the Rottweiler, it's done on leash. But these guys are off leash. They have to do what we tell them while they're attached to a cart. And is this your first Newfoundland? No, this is my second Newfoundland. And some of you might remember my first, Geert. He was a Landseer, which is black and white. And uh, the Bark Park, Sue uh, wanted to do something. Geert had died of uh, osteosarcoma, which is a cancer. And so we've done the uh, Geert's Canine Cancer Walk, and we've raised over $20,000 for canine cancer research. Um, and, but I kind of went into a funk, and it was the club that helped me find Isaac. And uh, the best thing they ever could have done for me is find me another Newfoundland. Um, what else do you want to know? OK, well, we're going to drop over now. Of course, you know, you have to notice here, this always amazes me. She's carrying a golf towel with her or a, a kitchen towel with her because he they drools. They drool a bit. And it drives me This is how crazy. you can tell. Oh, my Lord. Now, let me tell you why they drool. Tell me why they drool because right. I don't understand this. When you look at these dogs, it's you the can It's isn't it? Yes, these are called dewlaps. And in the Newfoundland, they are pronounced because they were used as water dogs. They've always been water dogs. And when they're holding something, if he has something in his mouth, then the, and he's in the water, the water's gonna choke him. So what it does is it comes out here. The water comes in and out here, and he can swim forever with his mouth wide open, and uh, it doesn't choke him. He can pull a boat to shore. He can uh, jump off a boat and get people. He can take a line to shore. He can go under a raft and get somebody, and um, bring them into shore. And that's um, why it drools. Well, yes, that's why they drool because this is okay. part of their, this is part of their, uh, you know, how they're made. Okay, now we're going to jump over to my left. We're going to talk to Deanna, and she has with her Banner. So tell us about Banner. So Banner's uh, registered name is Hazel Hollis Banner, and he is eight months old. He uh, just loves everything. He's just an adorable big love, and he has already started working in obedience training, and he has his novice, AKC novice title, so he is a companion dog. And what possessed you to get this big dog? So, um, we have a long history with the Newfoundland Club. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, because we've water trained with them for about a decade yes. now. And and what did you have other Newfoundlands in? Leon Oh, you had Leon Burgers yes. before Newfoundlands. Yes. Okay, we're going to talk so about still, those a little bit later. We still have a Leon Burger in her household, who we love and adore. And okay. We lost um, our senior Leon Burger to uh, lymphoma, to some lymphoma. And how old was that? He was eight years, two months. Eight years, two months. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the breed standard. What is the breed standard for this dog? I don't know. Do you have any idea? How, how <laughs> We all go to good breeders. How, how big? Seriously, how 
How big should they? How big can they get? How much does he weigh? He weighs 135. They can go about, you know, they could be smaller, but they can go up to about 145. Um, there are three colors that are approved in the United States: black, brown, and landseer, which is black with or white with black markings on it. Um, I don't think brown is approved in Canada, is it? Not in Canada. No, Canada does not approve the brown. Um, all three can be registered, all three. Um, they have webbed feet, they have dewlaps, and uh, I will tell you, if you don't pay a lot for a Newfoundland, you're not going to a good breeder. They're expensive, and they're expensive because to get a well-bred dog that has its heart and its hips and its eyes checked, you're getting a good puppy, takes money to do that. And uh, he came from a show uh, kennel where they show their dogs, but a lot of these people that show their dogs also train them for what the dog was bred to do. So they have water titles and draft titles. You're going to pay for that when you get a puppy, but you're going to get a good, healthy puppy. Um, and he's healthy. He's well, now, what's the issue with the eyes? Did you say eyes? Yes, eyes. It's just a check to make sure there's no okay. problem. Check the eyes. I've <laughs> never known a newborn not to have good eyes, but large dogs, large breed dogs, can have trouble with their hearts and their hips. So you want to get puppies that are already checked, and you know they're getting a good. And in fact, a lot of breeds check for heart and hips. I think even Goldens check for that. So, um, but in a in a giant breed, you want to be very careful because um, you know when they, we breed them so big we also breed in some problems. And so uh, you want to go to a reputable breeder and pay for a good dog. Okay, now Banner's got some white on him. I just saw yes, that. Yes, he has a white place. Just a little bit. And he has a white. And that doesn't matter when showing or anything like that? No, a white place is acceptable. In, in, in confirmation and everything, the white place is okay. Okay. Yes. You probably won't believe this, but he's got white on his chest. You just can't see it. <laughs> How so, would you find it? Yeah, you just can't see it. But he does have white on us. Okay, so we've got the idea that they come in three different colors. Mm -hmm. I like the white ones personally. Yeah. And I've never seen the brown ones. Are there a lot of brown ones in the Newfoundland group? I, I would say there's not a lot, but there, there are, yeah, we do have browns. We have gray too. It's also approved, gray is also an approved color in the United States. I think there was a movie one time, and I can't think of the name of it right now, but the, the star of it was a chocolate, uh, or the, the brown Newfoundland. I know which one you mean. I know, I can't, I can't remember either. Of it. Must, I think it was Must Love Dogs or something like that. I think it was. Yeah. Um, tell us about the, let's start over here. We're going to start with UBM. What's the personality of a Newfoundland? Oh, they're, well, their temperament should be sweet and acceptable. Are they always? They should be sweet. They should, yes. Do we ever yeah. see mean ones? If you do, they're not well bred. This oh, dog okay. is a nice, sweet, family dog. Uh, and while we're talking about that, I'm going to add something else to people. If you get a puppy within the first six to nine months you want to have that puppy meet at least a hundred people you want to take that puppy everywhere when he was a baby i took him to the cochranton fair i had him in all those barns i had him around the rides i had everybody i walked up to people and asked them to pet him uh, mm -hmm. if you want a dog that's exposed to people and good with people you want to expose them in their young when they're young to a lot of people and that's what we did with him but their temperament's unbelievable Kids can crawl all over. Uh, yeah. Good with kids? Good. Yeah. Do you have kids? No. Okay. And you? No. No, okay. No, this is our kids. This, this is the, this. these are the children yeah. here. Oh, I've had a little boy fall asleep on him. Do you remember down at the, we were at the downtown mall with a program and a little boy walked over and fell asleep on him. And we had to find the mom because I was afraid if he stood up, little guy's head would crack on the cement. So, uh, you know, we kind of protected the child, but he never moved. He never moved. Okay. Tell me some more about this one. I want to know more about Banner because he's, he's young. <laughs> he's adorable. He is cute. <laughs> Gosh. And how, well, how big will, how big will, this is the male. Male. So the males usually get to be between 130 to 150. What about the females? 110 to 120 usually. Do they, they have any other problems? What are some problems that they have besides the, the you said the uh, eyes, they can have problems with their weight the or hips. the hips and stuff like that. Is Cancer is problems? a problem. Cancer, Cancer with, large, is a, yes, right. with the large breeds, uh, but particularly with this breed, um, they can get cancer. Um, trying to think what other medical problems that well, they have. Let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about upkeep. Oh, How upkeep. tough is it to have these guys? You work at it. Um, they take a lot of combing. Um, again, while well, their babies teach them to tolerate combing and bathing. Um, and, you know, and you have to do their nails. Uh, I trim under his feet. 
so you do a lot of maintenance with them. Um, they have to be bathed because with the long coat, if they get out, they get wet and then dry and wet and then dry. They'll get an odor like any dog. I just bathe them. I, I have a big horse trough that I bought. It's about this big. Mm -hmm. And we cut a hole in the side and put some steps and put it up on a thing, and that's what I made him in. I yeah, that's like that booster bath that I bought. Yes. Same idea. Like we yep. have in here in the laundry up where you can walk exactly. the dog right up into it. And he can bathe in here. I do. I know. I have seen him in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Now, what, do you have to make sure he's really dry, or does he mat right away? Well, I blow him dry. I have a, a blower, and I usually get him 99%, and then I'll take him for a walk. When, when we're up at the lake, uh, I'll bathe them up at the lake after we've done water training. It takes me about 40 minutes to get home, so I put all the windows down and just drive home with the windows down. By the time I get home, he's dry. Mm -hmm. So, um, the main thing is you want to make sure the skin is dry. The skin oh, wait, is dry. Say, yeah. I'm sure that they didn't hear that. Yeah. What did you say the main thing is what? You want to make sure that the skin is dry, not just the fur. Um, yeah, yeah. It, the moisture stagnates against the skin. You can get Right, right. Yeah. We joke about that here because we've got the dock diving in, and I have uh, some of the people that have watched these have seen my dog Martin, and they always want me to bring, used to want me to bring Martin down to have him do dock diving. And I said, and, the, and of course I'm there with all the Labradors. Yeah. All the people that are here. Yeah, they're here in the salon. And they'll say, oh, Sue, let Martin swim by the swim. I said, you don't understand this. It's, in a half hour, your dog is dry. At 11 o'clock at night, my dog is still wet because yeah. it's real deep down inside. Yeah. So that's the only yeah. problem. Look at these two. Have they ever seen each other before? No. In the summer, when he was just a puppy. Oh, oh a did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's hard to tell where one starts. That's it. That's it. Where one starts and the other one can. Yeah. Um, let's talk about, we talked about the temperament. What about the training? Are they easy to train? I think they are. Come here. Uh, see how well trained he is? Say. Yeah, I always had that question. <laughs> they, um, yeah. and what I tell people is if, you're not, if you've never trained a dog before, go to class. We have a number of people in, in this area that have classes on dog training. Um, they're all positive, and, and that's the way we train. That's the way we train water. We train slow and easy. Um, teach them what you want on land, move it a little bit into the water, a little bit more to teach sit. I taught him hand and verbal. Um, so, you know, you just, just mess with them. Just, you know, go to a class and then have a good time with them. And I will tell you, too, dogs learn at different rates. I've been in classes where um, the dog I had at the time was a lab, and somebody else had another dog that wasn't quite the quick learner, and they were getting very frustrated. Just remember, your dog learns at whatever speed your dog learns, and it just take your time, just have a good time like these guys are. <laughs> well, now, who shouldn't own one of these? People that don't like drool, don't like to groom, Me, don't, don't like drool. Don't like to bathe. Uh, if you want an easy care dog that you don't really have to do much with, get something with short fur. Um, but you don't want one of these because well, no. they have to be trained. But I mean, they wouldn't do well in an apartment. Sure. Would they? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Are they lazy? No, they're just mm. not hyper. Okay, they're not hyper. But they would still require sedate without being lethargic. They're what? Sedate without being lethargic. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, they require exercise, but they, they are hyper like a terrier or something that you would have to get out all the time. So they just, they just, they're just wonderful. They're Tell just, me the five most important things about getting a Newfoundland. You're trying to talk me into it. Why would I want one? So you would want one for the temperament. Temperament, okay, that's number one. That's probably the most important. Number two, you want it for the constant companionship. There is Does he follow you everywhere? Everywhere. All through the house? You'll never go to the bathroom alone. Oh, <laughs> that's, that, yeah, that with a lot of dogs. Okay. So, uh, companionship and temperament, anything else? Um, beauty. Why did you get this dog? <laughs> I know why she gets it, because she's, I've known Debbie a long time. She's a little, you know, a little strange, and she always gets these big things. Yeah. Why did you do this? Why did you why did you switch from a Leon Burger to a Newfoundland? Well, we didn't switch. Oh. <laughs> we sure just, you did. We just added. Oh, you added. Okay. <laughs> now, if you were to get another dog, let's do it that way. If you were going to get another dog, and right now you have a Leon Burger and a new, what would you want to get if, between those two? What would you take the next dog? Either one. Whatever one's available. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add? Uh, 
No, I just think they're awesome. Well, let's talk, let's talk about Isaac. He does something else that's very important, and he goes. Oh yeah. He also is a pause and deliver therapy. Therapy dog. dog. He's a therapy yes, dog. He, is. he goes to the cancer center. He goes to the college. He goes to. We went to college one time, and, I, and the kids were just kind of wandering around. And I was sitting in a chair that had wheels, and he wanted to go see a kid. And he took off, and I just went zoom right across the room. Right with him. Yeah, they're strong. That's the thing you got to remember. They're strong. Well, we all, he can pull anybody anywhere. Yeah. And, well, and he is a therapy dog. He is with Paws Hand Deliver. He does do visits at the Cancer Center, and he also does some work at Allegheny College. And a hospital. We go to the hospital. And the hospital. Big one here tomorrow. You go to TCU with him? Yes. Okay, he does the uh, transitional yeah. care unit down there at Grove Street. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I don't know. I just, I just think they're a great breed. But, you know, I was, I, you know, my whole life I wanted a giant breed. And when I retired, I said to Jim, that's it, I'm getting a, a giant breed. And I researched the crap out of giant breeds and decided that this dog had, I was prepared for the work, but they had the temperament and the love and the ability. I could train them. I could do anything I wanted with You're them. Right. <laughs> We don't mind this at all. No, I mean, this, I don't mind it either. I want everybody to see them here, too. This is eight months, folks. <laughs> okay, wait. See what you, you have to see what we have on his head. Yes. Uh, 12 weeks. Yes, 12, 12 weeks. How much did he weigh? He was 35 pounds. 35 pounds at 12 weeks. That's what you're getting. Baby. He's, he's 135 right now. Okay, well, thanks very much. I think we've got, and we're going to be coming back in a little while talking more now about a lot of the water rescue work, which okay. um, Isaac already does. And are you going to start water rescue with this one too? Yes. Okay, yes. Good. She does this with the, the Leonberger. Her dog's really talented in water rescue with the Leonberger. Okay, now bear with us a few minutes. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to replace these two with two the Leonbergers. Okay, thank you very much, certainly appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, nice dog. <laughs> okay, we're good. Thank you. We'll be back in a few moments with okay. the <laughs> showing you some of the giant breeds that are available. And on my right, I have Sue Herman and, and her dog, Talon. And over on my left, I have Deanne Elko and her dog, Anchor. Good. I got it right. That's wonderful. All right, well, let's, talk, let's talk about the dog just in general, and then we'll talk about the breed and things like this. So let's start with Talon, and let's give Talon a little. How much does he weigh? 130. He it's, looks bigger than that. He does. He's a lot of fluff. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, my God, he is. Okay, he's tell actually, us about that. He's not mature yet. He still has probably another 10 to 15 pounds um, wow. to go. And how old is Talon? Just turned three. Just three? Yeah. And um, tell us a little bit more about him. Is there anything else we need to know about him? He's, he's huge. He's a solid dog. Um, the Leonbergers, they have web feet, like the Newfies. Mm -hmm. They um, do water rescue. And they are the only large breed dog bred just for companionship. So way back when the breed was um, first made, they were only their only job was to be a companion. That was it. That's it. Where are they from originally? The Inver, Germany. Really? Mm -hmm. And are there many of these in the United States? No, there's only a couple thousand. Wow. He's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, last year there was only 60. 68 litters born in the U.S. Well, let's talk about the coloring of them. Are they always this color? For the breed standard, they have to have a black face and a black mask that comes up past their eyes. They have to have black tipping. So if you look, like here on his chest, he has lighter coat, but at the end it's black. So my girl is a lot redder. They come like a sand color. Um, but as long as they have the black mask and the black tipping. That's all that really matters. That's all that matters. They're, they can have white the size of your hand, only on their chest. The size of your hand. Oh, my Lord. Is there anything else as far as, and you, you do confirmation with the We do confirmation. He has his championship. A champion. He's a champion. We're honored to have you here. <laughs> yes, you're a champion in confirmation. Yes. Were you up at the Erie Dog Show? Yes. Were there other Leonbergers up there? Yeah, there was 12, 13. 12? Oh, come on. In the area. I, I've never seen one until I met you. Until I, oh, I he's really a nice dog. Okay, now we're going to switch over. Deanna, tell me about this one here. So this is Anchor. She is seven and a half years old. Uh, she is our second Leonberger. And um, she 
has her titles in obedience. Mm -hmm. She has a drafting title, both uh, novice and open. She has her rally title, and then she is quite accomplished in the water rescue uh, work. Her coat feels a lot different than his. Yeah, um, so she had uh, spinal cord surgery uh, two years ago. Oh, okay. And so her coat has changed since they uh, did the surgery. And, and what was that for? She had a spinal cord hemangioma. And what does that mean? So uh, she had a um, a tumor growing out of her spinal cord, uh, and that it would chronically, um, intermittently bleed. And so it was com it was occupying. Uh, by the time they resected it, it was occupying eighty percent of the confined space of the spinal cord canal. How did you find that? So it was like a, uh, just like a lump that. No, you could not um, see it without uh, CT scan mm -hmm. imaging. She had a chronic uh, limp of her back right paw that became scuffing in over the years wow. and progressed. And um, it, that's is that common? No, no, it's very rare. This particular uh, type of tumor is frequently only found on the cropsy um, in dogs. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, let's talk about the breed standard. What, how big do they get? Tell me more about them. You said they're from uh, England, right? Germany. Germany, sorry. Germany. Yes, yeah, so the males are, the standard says they want the males approximately, is it 30 inches? 30 inches is their withers. Mm -hmm. And the females are, I think, 24 to 26, 28. And I think they prefer 27 inches for the females. The okay. Um, the males range between 130 and 170. Bigger than this was what 130? 130. Yeah. I can't imagine 170. Yeah, he's on the smaller end right now. Small? Okay. It looks awfully big to me. He's on the smaller end. He's still growing, but he won't be 170 pounds. Well, he put on a lot. He won't get any higher, of course. He's just going to put on more weight. In the last year, he has grown some. Um, High school, you mean? They okay. grow until they're five, so they're not fully mature until they're five years old. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And the females are what? What's the height on them again? Between um, 24 to 28, I believe, with the others. And she currently weighs about 103, and the females are usually about 110 to 120. She is small for the breed standard. Okay, let's talk about the different grooming on them. I noticed that when you first walked in here. I was noticing the feet in particular. Tell me about the grooming. Tell me all about the grooming on these dogs. Okay. So the Leon Burgundy. And can you do it yourself? You do it yourself? No. Um, oh. I used to. <laughs> but you can go to a groomer who will do this? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And what should the grooming so be? They have a double coat. And uh, they are to be, if you're going to show them confirmation, they are to be shown natural. So they're, you're not supposed to trim anything. If you are allowed to neaten the paws. Um, but for the most part, the ear fluff remains. It remains past the flap of the ear. Their coat is shown in the saddles. Do you have to trim the feet at all? You can't. Not at all. Yes. I mean, they're just about the same here. Yeah. So his, her fur will, con they'll, the toe fluff will continue, and it'll look like you know the bedroom slippers and that sort of thing, bunny fluff. So when we go in the snow, and the snow like it was two weeks ago, and the balls underneath, you get lots of snow underneath them. Underneath. Well, when you clean, you trim up. Trim up. Oh, you're, they're trimmed underneath. Them. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right. And then we, do, I do trim back the the toe fluff some, so right. because it will start to wrap underneath if you don't. Mm -hmm. That's a hazard. And you said as far as him on back, his back legs, that's just, sure, no. show how that is, because I noticed that when I first came in. Right here? Yes, this stays. Right. You don't, you don't take any of that off. You leave that on. Yep, that stays oh, wow. on. All that you do is you trim here under their paws and you trim the tops of their feet. Hmm. How long do these guys live? Um, everybody hopes to get 10 to 12 years. Well, we all hope to get 25 years. That doesn't yeah. work. No, there's... Seriously, what, about 10 years? About 10 years. Really? They're, they're very, they're, now his face seems a lot darker. She's a little older. <laughs> That's true, she is. And what is she again? She's seven? She's seven and a half. Yeah, she'll be eight in June. So the Leonberger, it's very, the breed, the males look masculine and the females look feminine. Some of the breeds, you yeah. can't tell the difference. 
but in a Leonberger you can. The males have a wider muzzle and a wider head. Absolutely. Versus Versus a female that is a little um, narrower in the muzzle, a little longer, and a not so broad head. What made you pick a Leonberger? I was How many of you had? He's, he's my, se he's my second. second. Mm -hmm. uh, we came from Golden Retrievers and from German Shepherds. And I was looking for a dog to do therapy work with. I wanted a big laid back dog and uh, saw one at a show. Did a lot of research, went and met a whole bunch, and then decided to get my name on the list. Well, he's laid back because when we were at a place up in uh, Erie, and I'm not going to explain where we were, but when we were there doing therapy work, he was doing the same trick Danny does. I'm just basically going to lay down, and now you can do whatever you want, and I'm going to pass my time looking for Open my eyes occasionally and look around yeah. occasionally. Very laid back, lovely, lovely disposition. I love the disposition of it. I think the laid back is what I just love. The other thing that you will love is that they don't drool. I was just, I was just <laughs> going to say that. Yeah. They don't drool. See, De Debbie's over here on the side. You can't see her because I'm on camera right now. But I love, I love her Leon Burger. When she had geared, I adored that dog. But of course, it was the drool. And the same thing with Isaac. That's why I think I like this one better. Because there's no drool they flying around drool. all the time. Yes. Yeah. Huh. So way back, they had Newfoundland in their base, and um, they have uh, great Pyrenees in them, and that's what gives them that. a little tighter, tighter lip. So okay, I'm just going to ask them. you that because she said that opening was there on the sides as far as carrying stuff and pulling stuff. They don't have that same thing. Well, do they do what? They they have, they, same yes. thing. So see, look at Alan here. It's, mm -hmm. he still oh, I has see. It. Yeah. It's just a little bit tighter so that they don't drool. Yes, I don't like that we said we don't like the drool. What else do we need to know about these yeah. guys? They have wet feet, so they do a lot of water rescue, a lot of a lot of water work. They love the water. Huh. Um, but these are basically companions more than anything. They are 100 percent companions. Yeah. Huh. Oh, I can't. They like this to be out, they like to be outside, but only if you're out with them. But they, oh. they want to be with you all of the time. They do enjoy working. Yes. Oh, do they really? They do. They do. They really shine in that. Um, arena. Yeah. Yeah, she's, like, she's real good up here. Yeah, she's very, she just looks friendly when you look at her. He looks, I think he looks a little more intimidating because he's so, is there something about him? He looks kind of massive. But she has more of a, uh, I don't know, I, I'm in the play here or something. Or maybe that's what she wants to do. I don't know. But what's she weigh? 103. 103. Okay, and the temperament, as you said, was all that. What are they, what are the health issues? Um, well, like any giant breed, you worry about um, the hips um, and the elbows, but all of your good breeders are going to test for that. Not that it's going to rule out in every dog mm -hmm. um, that they breed, but it certainly um, helps. Does anyone around here breed these Leo burgers? Um, there's myself up in here that I breed. Mm -hmm. um, and so you've had Leo burger puppies? We were in the process, right? Well, you're in the process now, okay. I was going to say, when, and, and, and normally, how many puppies would a Leonberger have? Between one and 16. 16. Mm -hmm. Who do I have in here one day, and I think maybe, maybe it was a Dane or something, and they were saying that they, they, their dog had puppies that were 14, and I said, oh my God, 14 puppies. Yeah. That's like two dinners in one. <laughs> that's a lot. Come yeah, on. I mean, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Tremendous amount of work. A lot of auto-feeding. Yes, up yeah. all night. Yes. Yes, that kind of stuff. Well, um, you do have to be up all night because the moms are big and they don't, if they would accidentally step or sit on one, you risk losing that puppy. And it's not that they're being mean, it's just that if you're in a large litter, or in a litter box and you have a large number of puppies, it's hard mine, for the moms to keep track of the puppies. Friend of mine, just had that happen with, with uh, another, I'm going to say what Brita was because they're from around here, but lost two of them. Because the uh, mother stepped on them, yeah. and it, it was just too late to do anything about it. What else do you want to tell me about these guys? I mean, I really like them. Um, they're great around kids. They're great around older people. They are. They love to be outside and walk and run. If you're with them, you know, we take them hiking. We take them for walks. We take them swimming. Um, they like to work, like Deanna said. Uh, just a good, good dog. Do you have a lot of room at your house for? Can be run in your yard. Yeah. Yep. 
couple of years. Okay. Because I was kidding, Deanna here, because she's from Pittsburgh and from Shadyside, and I said, oh, where do you walk in Shadyside? The streets of Shadyside or whatever, because there's not a lot of room in Shadyside. Squirrel Hill. Squirrel Hill. Squirrel Hill. They're close to each other. Yes, exactly. Sure. Yeah. No, yes. there's not so much, but there, we have a lot of um, parks and green spaces available oh, of course. nearby. And um, they, they, like the Newfoundland, will just follow you everywhere. Have you ever made one of your dogs, whether this or uh, Anchor here, into a therapy dog? Yes, um, both she and Medley were therapy dogs. Really? Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. I'm sure that people just love them. Okay, what we want to do now is we're going to really mess things up here a little bit. We're going to bring in the puppies and let you get an idea of them. And then we're going to talk about water rescue and the work that both Sue and Debbie Myers and that Deanne do with the water rescue. So we're going to take another break and come back and talk about that. Okay, thanks. Those are nice. <laughs> I'm interested in everyone learning about, and there's a wonderful thing that happens up here all summer long in this area. And if you're from northwestern Pennsylvania, one of our great areas for doing a lot of things is Pomatuning Lake. And one of the things that they do at Pomatuning is that they do water rescue with the Newfoundland, the Panel High Newfoundland Club. So let's talk about the club just very briefly, and then we're going to show you some of the things here that these dogs are able to do. Our plan is, if I can talk the cameraman into this, is that we're going to go over there this summer on a Saturday or Sunday and actually film a lot that's going on. So you'll see this program that you're watching now, and then hopefully we'll get to the point that we're able to add on to that everything that's happening with uh, the Penn, Ohio, Newfoundland Club and show these dogs actually at work. So we're going to give you a little taste of it now and explain some of these things to you and then keep your ears open and check with us at the Bark Park to see whenever something else is coming on. So I'm going to turn the program over to Deanne and also to Sue and to Debbie and they're going to kind of wing it and if I have a question I'm going to uh, bring it in from the side and notice I'm standing by the one that drools. This is not good. <laughs> I really don't like it. You're right. I really don't like it. This is what I listen to every time. Oh, don't it's... let him drool on me. He comes over to me and I say get him away from me. He's drooling all over me. Okay, back to you. Deanne, we're going to start with you. They tell me you're the one that I should turn to here. You're going to start and let's talk about a little bit about them again. They all do this and then some of these things that are here on the floor. Right, so uh, the Newfoundland is the quintessential water dog and the Leon Burgers are well equipped to do it as well. Both of them have webbed feet. The Newfoundland uh, swims with the breaststroke, which gives them great endurance. And the Leon Burger swims a more traditional uh, dog style. Freestyle. Freestyle. Right. Um, but again, they, uh, both breeds have webbed feet, and we've had other breeds as well participate in the water rescue uh, work as well. And they, um, it's all a lot of dog fun. <laughs> and what is that help uh, from when to when? So we start training. Our water camp is the first weekend of June this year. So it's um, June 2nd and 3rd, and then um, our water test is August 9th, 10th, and 11th, I believe. So the second weekend, weekend in August. So if I'm from this area or not from this area and I just want to come over and see all this, does it cost me money to see it? No. So I can just walk on, don't go up, I shouldn't go up to the dogs, basically, unless I ask you. Correct. Right, but I can stand back and I can take pictures and I can watch everything that's happening. Yes. Right. I need to really stress this to people. This is so important for people in this area to realize that this is a great, great thing that's going on in Pimatuni and what the Penn, Ohio, uh, Newfoundland group does, and you need to take advantage of it. Bring the kids, bring the family, bring everyone. There's picnic tables here and everything. There's food for people to get? No. No, no food. Oh, got to bring our food. This is training. Pack around pack. Yeah, this okay. is training. Yeah. Right, you don't want to have any food and any snacks by the dogs. Good point. Uh, but they can come and they can watch this. So let's talk some more about it now. I so, want to mention, too, that this is at the dam at Pimatuni. Okay. So if you're from the area, um, from the first part of June to the end of August, we, we actually practice after the... Uh, after the test because some people are going to other states to take the test. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the weekends at the dam, when you come over the dam, we're down to the left, bring a chair, bring some lunch and come down and watch. Uh, we've had people come dressed and say, can I have a dog pull me out? We'll go in the water, we'll have a dog pull you out. So Really? Yeah, we don't care. 
Okay, okay, back to you, Deanne. What else, what's next we're going to talk about here? So, the dogs compete or they, they train? And so, they train, and it is a collaborative effort. It takes a village to raise one water dog. So, you will often hear us refer to it as our tra water training village. Um, and unlike other dog sports, it is not competitive in that no dog finishes first. Every dog can pass and every dog can fail. And we all laugh and we all cry and we all rejoice together as a community, uh, which is very um, unusual. Uh, Absolutely. So they're actually then competing for a level a of level. performance and not for first, second, third, fourth, third, anything like that. Correct. Okay, what are the levels that they can be? So there are three different levels. There is, and it's a bit of an alphabet soup. So if you're <laughs> confused, it's, you have good reason. Um, the first level, the entry level, is Water Dog, uh, WD, and it's also referred to as the Junior level. And there are um, exercises that will then build to the higher level exercises. And then the second level is Water Rescue Dog, WRD, and that is the Senior level. And then there is a third level. W or Water Rescue Dog Excellent, and that is WRDX, and that is often shortened to X. Okay, well, let's talk about what level is uh, Talon at? Talon this summer, he passed his WD, his Water Dog, so now we are working and hopefully get his go for his uh, senior level this summer. So he's at the lowest level? He passed his lowest level. Lowest level, he's already done that? Yes. Okay, what about uh, this one here? So Anchor, um, it has requalified at the highest level once, and um, the year that she attained her junior level title, her water dog title, she also attained her first X title. So she passed all three levels in one year. Which is unheard of, I understand. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. And now what does she do next? I mean, does she just, she's already done those three levels. What's next for her? So um, we just continue to make the exercises interesting and challenging for her to keep her mentally engaged and interested in, in doing the work. She loves to, to do the work. But there's only one level of excellence. There is, that's okay. true. Okay, yes. and that's what she is. Thank but, goodness. Um, I know. <laughs> so the Leon Berger Club of America is in the process of making their own water rescue uh, trial regulations. Has, has, and so they're slightly different. Than have the Leonbergers always been part of the uh, no, Penn Ohio? No, no, no. It's, uh, Penn Ohio is the Newfoundland Club. And right. they um, are generous enough and welcoming to uh, allow the Leonbergers and us. Uh, and how long have the Leonbergers been involved with that? Just give me a guess. A couple so, years? Or? Uh, uh, that was seven or eight years. Oh, seven or eight years? Okay. Yeah. 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 Right, well, they didn't about have a water test, so the Newfoundland Club, when approached by the Leonberger Club, said, sure, we'll just Great. throw them in with us. So. Okay, what about this one here? Well, he <laughs> has his, his, yeah, he yeah. has a, his junior test, his junior title, he has his senior title. He's trained to do his excellent title, and this past mm -hmm. summer, uh, he passed all the exercises except uh, there's an exercise where they have to jump off the boat, get three people in the water, and bring them to the boat. He did not pass that, he brought two, but he had an infection this past summer. And we had been taking him to Pittsburgh, they told me go ahead and enter him in the test. Um, after that, uh, they, I took him down and they flushed it and this infection had eaten his eardrum and part of his skull. So he was having difficulty with the water going in his ear and out his nose. Okay. And so when he brought the two people in, I could see water coming out his nose and I thought, he looks like he's drowning. Mm -hmm. So he didn't, he didn't get the third person. But he did the under, they have to do an exercise where they go under a raft. Somebody has a raft lift on them. They go under the raft. He did that one. He did everything else, but he just would not get that third person. So can he ever not go back and do that? Or because no. of the injury, he can't? No, I will never enter into water. Okay, yet. so he's getting all these other things that would be nice to do too. Yeah. Okay. What are the things on the ground here? So these are uh, some of the tricks of our trade, and uh, they're really rather um, common aquatic items that you would find. So a bumper, which any 
most dog owners have these days. Um, this device will float and um, frequently they're hung on the outside of boats to protect them mm -hmm. from the dogs. This is a boat cushion and this is a life jacket. So um, these are both rescue devices that you could toss to somebody or um, could be dropped out of a watercraft that they, that perhaps if you didn't mean to have them go so far astray, mm -hmm. your dog would be welcome to retrieve them. Okay. Uh, this is a life ring, which you frequently see on the trails near water. Sure. Um, also can be tossed or it could be towed by the dog to a person, to tow a person in. Okay. Uh, this, as that, um, is a, is You've a, got someone a, very interested. a bumper with a towing line mm -hmm. so that they can tow a boat into shore mm -hmm. or to um, another area that would be meaningful for assistance. And then, Is most of what they do pull people in using a device, or can they also grab they, my arm and pull me in? Yes. So, so it's either a device or it would be my arm? It would be a device. You can, people, um, victims can hold onto the fur of the dog, the rump fur of the dog. Okay. And the dog can also rescue you by hand or arm. And at the excellent level, there is a um, exercise referred to as the unconscious victim, so the person, and Debbie is an excellent unconscious victim. So I'm you're actually, you're, 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 you're in the water like this. No, on my back. On your back. And, back. and yeah, you don't do anything, you just watch the birds, and the dog comes and grabs your arm, turns you around, takes you to shore. It's awesome. <laughs> and the dogs um, either disembark from shore or off of a boat to rescue. Okay. Just off of a rowboat type thing. What are yeah. pontoons? No, we don't usually use talk pontoons, but there's probably no reason they couldn't call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A pontoon would be we great. We just throw a boat out because it's know, easier. It's easier. And then we also use a kayak too. Okay. Yeah. And then so on shore, when we're on land in the middle of winter, what's more easy than a sled to start to train towing a boat? Now, so this is a water rescue, and the one thing that you said, I think, from a previous presentation, you said uh, Isaac has also done. Uh, the um, cart. Yes, yes, he has. Um, do the hamburgers do that too? Yes. Pull yes. a cart behind them. Yes. The difference between water work and draft work is that they have to manipulate, there's so much of the environment that is manipulated with their mouth, mm -hmm. with their muzzle, and than um, any other venue. Where in draft, they were pulling more through their chest. So oh, okay, right. You yeah. have to overcome those um, forces. So let's go back again because I don't want to. I want to make sure everybody understands this. So when does this start again? June. First June, weekend. First in June. weekend in June till the last weekend in August. Last weekend in August and it's held down by the dam. I'm attending. Yep. And anybody can go. What the hours? Oh, Did usually some, there's usually somebody there pretty early. I mean, by eight there's people there, um, and then most of the people show up about ten or eleven, and usually by three or four we're done. But it's it's like Deanna said, it's a it's a village because if we're teaching a dog, for example, and they're learning to jump off a boat, we'll have maybe three people in the water just walking that boat out and then have the, the handler can be doing things with the dog. So it takes a lot of people to train this. Penn Ohio also has a website. Yes. yes. Do they not? And there can, we can find that information by going to that all summer long. Yeah, just put Penn Ohio Newfoundland Club and I'll take it. Yeah. We have a Facebook page and we have a website. Okay, Sue, tell me three things everybody should remember from this presentation today. What are the three most important things you hope people know when they listen to all this, all this, learn all about the dogs? Number one, if you want a good sound dog, make sure you go to a record of breeder. Good. Because you're not going to get, you might not get a healthy dog, you might not get a sound temperament dog. You need to make sure that you get a dog from a good breeder for a Newfoundland or a Leanberger. Okay. Number two, make sure you come check us out for the water grading. Um, beginning of June, first weekend in June through August, down by the dam. And number three, these guys make great pets. You need to like shedding, you need to like drool, you need to like a lot of dog. Do they shed a lot? Obviously. They sure do. Oh, mine do, yeah. They I'm, sure I'm do. I'm doing that all the time. 
Dean, what do we want these people to tell? We're going to go to Debbie last and see how good she is at this. Okay, three things, quick. Oh, three things. Yep. So, this one's a happy baby. <laughs> She's very happy. She's a very <laughs> happy girl. I have never seen it. What's this one's name again? Anchor. Anchor. Yes. So, uh, they are a giant breed. And with that comes size and mass. Mm -hmm. And once you get those forces moving, you will go where they go unless you train your dog. So, you need to train your dog. How important is it to have the right dog food for giant breeds? Very important. I think so too, yeah. Very, very important. Some of us, I mean, of course, I just have Danny, my colleague, they all know him, but that's another one. You want to make sure you're using the breed, the, the, the dog food that is good and not one that is just on sale at some of the other places. You're buying a good dog food for these giant breeds. Very, very important. Right. Debbie, on to you. I would say uh, one of the most important things, and it's really true of any dog, and that is socialize the crap out of your dog when you first get it. These dogs didn't come like this. They were trained. They, we took them out. They met people. They met dogs. They met animals. Um, we took them to a reputable training facility uh, to, to teach us to teach them. Um, teach, training your dog and socializing your dog is the best thing you can do to have a well-adjusted dog as it gets older. And when you start them young with training, you'll train their whole lives. You'll, there's so much you can do out there. In, in this county, I mean, we've got the bark park, we've got, uh, there are places to train uh, tracking, there are places to get training, there's the water training, the draft, you know, we do, sometimes we locally do draft right. training. Um, uh, we've talked about having some draft training up sure. here. Uh, you just, once you get into it, you won't stop because you and your dog develop such a bond. So I just recommend socialize them and train them and have a really good time with your dogs. Get a good breeder. Get a good breeder. Get your dog into training as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. There's lots of good trainers in the Meadville area and all over western Pennsylvania and all over the United States. You can get a good trainer. Check them out before you take classes from them, but find out what they're doing, how they train, but get your dog into training. If you want your dog to be a good therapy dog, then you want to also consider that. If you want to find out about that, both Sue and I are very involved with the therapy dogs organizations. And also, one step beyond our therapy dogs is the dogs that are called Hope Dogs, Sue, and what are Hope yes. Dogs? Uh, we are animal assisted crisis response. Our dogs go to natural and man-made disasters around the United States and aid um, people involved in a crisis, their families, the first responders. Right, and if you look on, I do believe, I'm not positive, but I do believe if you go to YouTube, you're going to find out that there is also one of our videos that we did on Hope, then you can find out about that. If you're interested in therapy dog um, training or, or testing, we just are finishing that up right now. Every dog, before they get to a lot of places, doesn't hurt them to get into therapy dog work because it really socializes them quite a lot. And we will be doing that probably again in June. If you ever want to find out when we're doing therapy dog training, call the Bark Park and we can do that for you and get you hooked up for that. I think they have to be a year old to be a therapy dog. They have to be a year old to be a therapy dog. But you can get a dog and you probably want to get them into regular training probably at about, um, I'd say maybe three and a half, four months, whenever they've had their second set of shots and things like that. Uh, we here at the Bark Park really push for Red Ball, Red Ball Dog Academy. Yes. And uh, I think they're quite good. So you, but as I said, there are many other ones in the Meadville area also. Thank you very much for coming, bringing your dogs. Thank you. Down from Erie. 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 Thank you for bringing your dogs up from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. And Debbie, keep your coffers. Okay, thanks very much. If you have any questions, you can always contact the Bark Park, and we'll get you hooked up with one of these people. If you end up with one of these breeds and want to learn more about it or about the water rescue or anything like that, so thank you very much. Thank you.